I'm not sure about you, but I am definitely drowning in fabric scraps like up to here. So today we're going to do a really fun, quick and easy scrap busting project. I would love to share with you how to create these cute little taco pouches. As you can see, you can make them small, you can make them big, so you can definitely vary them in size depending on what fabric scraps you have. And I know that it doesn't seem like much, but believe me, this is just the tip of the iceberg. I have more in the corner, there's another box. So hopefully we can tame some of them and turn them into useful projects. Now to get started on this project, of course, you're going to need your fabric scraps. I'm using mostly cotton, some linen, some cotton linen blends. All of them are woven, no stretch. And then you will also need an assortment of zippers, just depending on how many of the zipper patches you would like to make. And then of course, some type of interfacing to make it a little bit sturdier. So in my case, I'm going to be using this fusible fleece that I had left over from this little basket project that I did. This past Christmas. The first step for me is to sort out the fabric scraps and find large enough pieces in order to cut out the template for my taco pouch. Now you can see the measurements for this template right now on the screen, but if you are a member of this channel, first of all, thank you so so much for your support. I truly appreciate you. And then you do have the template for the large one and for the small taco pouch available as a part of your membership. All of these measurements already include seam allowances for the taco pouches. Here I have my inner fabric, my outer fabric, and my fusible fleece interfacing. Now let's give them a really good press and fuse this piece to the outer fabric. While we're at it, let's grab a little leftover fabric, about seven inches by two inches. First, we're going to fold it in half, give it a really good press, and then we're going to fold in the raw edges. This is going to create those little tabs on the bottom of the pouch. Now that you have folded it in, give it another really good press so that way it's easier for us to stitch. This is the sandwich that we're going to be working with. Let me show you the final result of this stage. So this one is already quilted, so that's one of the things that we will need to do. We're going to attach the little tabs and perhaps a little label as well. To do the quilting, I'm going to grab my ruler and heat erasable pen. You can also use chalk or washable marker. And then I'm going to draw the lines. All of them are going to be parallel to each other. After I have completed marking my quilting grid, I will add just a couple of pins to hold everything together. And after that, I will head to the sewing machine to complete the actual stitching lines. To do this, I'm using just a regular straight stitch, starting with the back stitch and ending each line with the back stitch as well. But I did increase the stitch length just by a tad to make those lines a bit more pronounced. All right, so my quilting is done. I will go ahead and tidy up the edges because the inner layer is linen, so it does sort of deform a little bit. And then I will also cut out these, and that's the reason why I didn't do that in the first place. And after that, I will add a little label. I think I will go with the one that says from my heart to yours. Now, you can of course put anything that you would like on your labels. You can also use your sewing machine to put something on your pouch. But if you've been looking for some really great sewing labels, then I do have a nice discount code for you in the description of this video. It is an affiliate link, I'm not hiding that, but I truly love these labels. I've been using them for a while. My friends have been using them for a while and uh, I've been really, really happy with the quality. So if you've been looking for some, there is a discount code for you so you can and save a little bit of money. Once I have attached the label, now I have to finish this piece with just a straight stitch on one side 
and on the other side. Next, I'm going to fold it in half and cut it. And then I'm going to fold it in half again and place it on each side like so, right in the middle. And then stitch it down. The stitch is about a quarter of an inch away from the edge. Now I'm ready for the zipper. And this zipper, 16 inches long, is just a little bit longer than the top. And it does make it easier to work with it. What I'm going to do next is I'll take my zipper. I will open this up. Currently it's facing face up. Now I'm going to turn it down and aligning the top of the zipper with a face down with the edge right over here. I'm going to first pin just here on top because it is actually easier for me to not to pin it all the way and just control it right as I sew. Switch your sewing machine to a zipper foot and now with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance let's attach the zipper. As you can see, I do stop and then continue stitching quite often, adjusting in the process and using my fingers in order to conform the zipper tape to the curve of the pouch. And this is what I have after completion. And as you can see right now, some of that seam allowance is peeking under the zipper tape ever so slightly. So right now I'm going to fold it away and use my scissors to trim it just the tiniest bit. So that way we can be ready for the next step. Once done, I'm going to fold the zipper tape to the wrong side of the project, like so. And now it hides all of that seam allowance. And I'm going to top stitch right over here, about a quarter of an inch from the edge of the fabric. For this, I actually went back to my regular presser foot. And just like previously, I'm going to be using a regular straight stitch. The overall goal of the stitching is to secure the zipper and all of the raw edges underneath it so that way it's nice and neat and we don't have to do anything extra. Now let's attach the other side of the zipper. Again face down, placing the edge of the zipper with this edge and then continuing with all of the same steps that we did previously on this side. Once both sides of the zipper are done, now we have to form the corners. Let's start with this one first. So fold it in like so. And the same with the other side. And then let's stitch it across. When you're working on this, make sure to avoid any metal parts of the zipper to not to damage your sewing machine or break the needle. Now here I did it about 3 8 of an inch away from the edge, but you can always turn out the corner and see if you'd like to take a little bit more, and if so, do that. But remember, you will need to repeat exactly the same steps on the other side as well. As a result, I decided to do another row of stitches, so in total I took about half an inch away from the edge. Now we can snip off the extra over here. Not too much, just to tidy it up. And the same we're going to do on this side. Next, I'm going to grab leftover pieces of fabric and we're going to cover these raw edges. First, I folded my piece of fabric like I would for a bias tape. Then, I wrapped it around the raw edge of the zipper tape, like so. Next, I'm going to stitch across inside of the seam allowance. After it's done, just snip off the extra on the angle like so. And if you'd like, you can add a few drops of fray check over here. But these raw edges aren't really going to go anywhere as soon as you fold them in. Of course, here I have to repeat the same on the other side, but other than that, it is done and ready. If you'd like, you can add a little ring into one of the tabs, maybe a little ribbon into a zipper pull, but that's it. Your pouch is ready to be gifted. Perhaps you want to make them as a batch for your farmer's market, as I did for these little ones. If you batch it, it goes even faster. So I truly hope that you enjoyed this project. And if you would like to see more projects like these, check out this series from last year where I did handmade gifts for Christmas, you might find quite a few interesting ideas for sewing and selling or for sewing and gifting.